I was in high school, so you know that was like many, many moons ago. I was in high school. I think I was a sophomore, sophomore, junior. I think I was a sophomore. I, I can't. It, it's a sophomore or junior. And this particular um, class I was taking, which was geometry, I had a teacher. Her name is Miss Barbara. And in this class, it was maybe 12 people in the entire class. So it's a very small class. The, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It was hard. It was hard. I was struggling. But I wasn't going to give up. That's just me. I'm not going to give up. And hopefully you're the same way. I'm not going to give up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give up. If I go down, I'm going down fighting. You better believe that. I'm going down fighting. I'm not going to give up. But anyway, so we were in ge um, geometry class this particular day, and I remember not mind you, let me go back. Geometry was a um, a college prep program. I don't know what it is now, but back then it was a college prep program because I want to go to college. So I'm here, I'm making preparation, okay? So I'm in this course and yes, it was hard. I wasn't failing, but it was a struggle. And so during class one day in front of everybody, guys, she said, Cynthia, I said, yes, ma'am. She said, are you intent to go to college? Again, she was trying to be really just negative. This is a teacher. I'm in high school. So she says this in front of the class. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, well, honestly, I don't think you're college material. In front of everybody. Yes, in front of everybody. I'm from a very small town, middle Georgia, central Georgia. I don't know where it is, but it's a very small town. And I, I tell you, when she said that, it was, it was crushing. It was. For a minute, it kind of shook me. When I got home, I, you know, told my parents what happened and what she said and I was really upset I was crying you know for her to say that but her for her to say that in front of my peers and they sitting there listening to it and she meant it to be degrading and to bring in self-doubt so now I got to shake this off of me to hear a teacher say that I'm not college material. I'm not college. That's what she said. You're not college material. So I had to play that over over my head every time I went in her room. But when I went home, I talked to my parents. My mom said, you know, no. If you, if you want to go to college, you're going to college. If that's what you want, you're going to do it. And ever since I was a child, if I can't get something right away, I'm going to keep working at it. Just like anything. Just like what I'm doing right now. Just because it doesn't come easy doesn't mean that you cannot do it. It doesn't mean that. It probably take you a little bit longer. A, a little bit more effort. That's it. But it doesn't mean that you cannot accomplish what you want to accomplish. But because I have a mother that believed in me and encouraged me she went out to the school mm -hmm. <laughs> she went out to the school and she had a meeting with the teacher and with the um, assistant principal and she began now I wasn't in the meeting I wasn't in the meeting so it was just my mom the teacher uh, which is Miss Barbara and my the assistant Principal. I think it was Mr. Carter. I think it was. Not really sure. But anyway, 
So they had a meeting and she began to tell Miss Barbara, you know, no, you know, it's not your place to tell her that she's not college material. It's your place to encourage her, your teacher, blah, blah, whatever. So when mom got home, she said, you know, hey, she said she's going to apologize to you in front of the class. Well, she did. So the next day I got in class, she apologized. But you have to understand, words hurt. It's damaging. And But I had to understand just because she said that, it wasn't going to create anything. But if I would have stayed there, believed what she said, and kept and start to repeat those words over myself, then it would have created something. But let me tell you how God work, okay? So when she said what she said, when she told me, oh, you're not college material. Okay, it was very damaging. Well, it could have been. Let me say that. It could have been. That's what she wanted. But it didn't work. It did not work. So my mind said, hey, you got to show her. You got to work double hard, whatever, whatever you need to do. And you need to show her that you do have the capability to go to college and succeed. The devil is a lie. <laughs> so, so when it, after she came in and she apologized, one of the guys in the classroom, his name is Alan. I can't remember Alan's last name. I wish I could. And if anyone know Alan from Peach County High School, the class of 89, whoop, whoop, 89, um, let me know what's his last name because I cannot remember it. But this young man, we're the same age. And so when he hears this, of course the kids, they're laughing. You know what I'm saying? They are laughing. They think it's funny. They think it's funny. So they're laughing. And at my school back then, it was probably still is maybe um, a lot of racism. <laughs> A lot of racism. Let me just say that. I'm being honest. Well, a lot, lot of racism. So, this guy in my class, again, it was only 12 of us. Out of the 12, it was three black. And when Alan was in the room when she said what she said, what he did was, was amazing. He wrote a note. He wrote a note. Gave it to me at the end of the class. Now, he gave me a note because he did not want his friends to know that he uh, was talking to me. He didn't want them to know. So he gave me, he gave me a note. So I looked at the note and in the note, he said that, hey, um, I'll, you know, give me your number. I will tutor you. You know, I will, you know, be able to help you and tutor you and whatever. Now, I could have rejected that help, okay, because the way that it was given to me, okay? Oh, I don't want your help. You know, I don't need your help. You don't want your friends to know you're talking to me because I'm black and blah, blah, blah. Uh-uh. No, I didn't. What I did was to say thank you. Praise the Lord, because I, I needed some help. You know, sometimes people are out there, but because of what you think about a situation, you won't take it. That's crazy. I took that help. And let me tell you, he called me. The first time he called me, I never called him. I didn't even have his number. But he called me, and the first thing that he said was, he apologized for what she said. Miss Barbara, the teacher said to me in front of everyone, he apologized. This is a child, a teenager, just like I was. But he had enough compassion and love for me as a human being to say, you know, I'm sorry, that wasn't right. That wasn't right. Now, mind you, when we were out, he didn't say a mama word. No one never knew that this young man was helping me. 
Did I make it known? No, because I knew he didn't want it to be known. He didn't want it to be known. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful that he had enough love. And guys, it is some really good people out here. Regardless, yes, I understand what's going on today in today's world. But he did something that he did not have to do. Now, mind you, this is back in the 80s. That's what, you know, my school was, is, you know, you had two homecoming queens, one black, one white, two different proms, one white, one black. That's just how it was back then. But I still think about the fact that he didn't have to do what he did. And I thank God that he touched his heart and gave me favor with him. And he will call me and tutor me over the phone when we have get ready to have a quiz, a test, or just homework. He will call me and he will stay on the phone and he will help me. He has so much patience. Oh, I wish I knew his name because I would like to let him know how much that meant to me. And even at 51 years old, I still remember that. I still remember that. But I said all that to let you know that just because Miss Barbara said what she said to try to just um, to destroy me and to put self doubt in my mind, this young man got sent my way and said nope. And when I tell you, I was able to get a B out of that class. She was shocked. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was shocked. But I knew I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to give up. That's just what's in me. That's what I tell my daughter. You cannot give up. As long as you have breath in your body, you have another day. You have another opportunity to get what you got wrong right today. So that's what I really want to encourage you. So if you got someone in your life that keep telling you, oh, because they couldn't do it and, you know, they don't believe in what you're doing or whatever, and they're constantly telling you you don't have the capability and you can't do this and what, no, don't believe them. Don't believe them. Don't believe that lie. Don't believe them. You can, even though it's probably, like I said, a little bit harder. You learn differently than someone else. But guess what? You can do it. If you don't give up, you're going to do it. So, I just thought about that a couple of days ago. I'm like, wow, let me share this. Because, again, sometimes you you see people and you don't know what they have gone through until we share with each other, you know, and build each other. Up.